That's the truth. Well, good morning. We are glad that you are here this morning. Andy was back there rushing me up, and I said, I can't start without me. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, but uh, appreciate him trying to keep us on time. First song, 296. 296. We have come into his house. Amen. Let's all sing. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to to be here this morning. We're glad that you are here, and we want to welcome you. If you're visiting with us this morning, you're certainly our honored guest, and we appreciate your presence and invite you to be back at any time that you may have opportunity. Uh, if you're with us inside this morning or if you're joining us in the parking lot, we certainly want to welcome you, and we appreciate very much your presence. We do have uh, several things we'd like to announce. We want to uh, continue to honor our veterans. Uh, the Veterans Day was on Thursday, the 11th, and uh, we, we want to say thank you for the service of all of our veterans. We have several here. We want to tell you how much we appreciate uh, the, the service that you gave to our country, and we're thankful for that. I want to uh, kind of give a, a build-up, if you will, to our Sunday morning and our Wednesday evening classes. Um, we need you here. We need some uh, more of your input. Uh, we, we're having great classes and great discussions, and we appreciate very much all the effort that's going into that. On that note, there are books for our Sunday morning class and our Wednesday evening class, so if you do not have those, make sure that you pick those up on the table there in the back, uh, and they are labeled on the box. It tells you which one is for what. We're studying the book of Romans on Sunday morning, and we're studying uh, a book in uh, on Wednesday evenings entitled I Can Do It. Uh, I believe that's right. Uh, great studies. Uh, so uh, Willard Conchin is the, the writer of those books and uh, they're, they're great books. They're, they're pretty deep at times. Uh, but if you come and, and you hear what we come up with in the classes, uh, you'll enjoy that. I also want to mention that we're going to be having a men's breakfast on December the 4th. We're trying to, uh, to miss uh, Thanksgiving and, uh, and get it right before the holidays there. So, so men, remember that. We want to make your plans to, to be a part of that. It'll be the last one this year, probably. It'll be the first one this year. It'll be the first one this year. So uh, we've been uh, we've been missing those. So uh, so men, make your plans to be there for that, please. Uh, we also want to uh, to mention that we have a, a sign up sheet out there. We're trying to uh, to encourage those that would like to be teachers uh, to to sign up on that sheet. Uh, we have we've asked you to sign your name there if you're you're willing to do that. If you're currently teaching or if you're you're looking to uh, to get involved in the teaching, we we need you to be a part of that. So encourage us by putting your name down there and, and and putting the age group that you would prefer to teach. And then on next Sunday morning, following our morning worship service, we're going to try to have a meeting with those that would like to teach and uh, and see if we can organize and and do a little bit of uh, getting our 
our, our Sunday school classes and Wednesday evening classes uh, may be a little bit better organized. Sometimes we have a group of kids. We'll have a big group of kids, and they'll be from ages zero to, uh, to up to five or six. So we're trying to get that a little bit better organized so that we can, uh, can do better with our teaching on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. It is time to talk about Child Haven for, for our Christmas. And this this year, they have given us only two girls to work with. So uh, we're, we're taking donations for that, monetary donations. So out there on the table out front, you'll find a, a card, a, a bucket with some cards in it. So you pick up a card, and you can uh, put your name and your donation in there and bring those back, and we'll, we'll get all of those down to them uh, before the time. Our cutoff date this, this time is going to be Sunday, December the 5th, I believe. Is that, is that correct? Uh, so it gives you a few weeks here to work with. And uh, if you want to give donations, you go out there and there's no card, find uh, D or, or Kathy or Al one and give them uh, the badge. You can put it in their hand to do whatever, and we'll make sure that that gets to them. We want to remember all of those that we have here on our prayer list. We want you to, uh, to remember each and every one of those. Um, I have another announcement there. The men need to meet just briefly after service this morning, please. We need to talk about something uh, just briefly. I won't take just a second. I want to remember uh, still those that have lost loved ones. I want to remember the Langley family still in your prayers. Also, Sister Jill is still really banged up, uh, so please remember her. And remember all of these that are on the list behind us. Please let us know if there's any updates or anything to be, uh, to be made on these that are, that are on the list here. If we need to uh, give any updates or, or let us know if there's any changes in anybody, please. Told you I had a lot of announcements there. Next song this morning. <clears throat> 968, Oh, They Tell Me of a Home. <clears throat> we'll sing verses 1 and 4 of this song. Well, let's all sing. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far song or song before we have our scripture reading and our opening prayer will be song number four to God be the glory song number four we'll sing verses one and two <clears throat> let's all sing to God be the glory great things he had done so loved he the Praise the Lord, let 
rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He hath done, great things He hath taught us, great things He scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 17 verses 18 and 19. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the state you've given us and we thank you for many blessings. We thank you for this and other opportunity to come here and worship you. We pray that we everything we do and say that this morning will be according to your will. We pray for this congregation that meets here in Rainsville. We pray that the we pray for all the works that we're involved in here locally and throughout the world. We also pray that ultimate goal in these works will be bringing lost souls into you. We pray for those that was on the board this morning as being sick, and we pray for you be your will that can grant their health and take their regular steps in life. We also pray for those that soft love loved ones, and we pray that you'll comfort them in a way only you can. We pray that even though it is not worthy that you sent your son on, the, on this earth to die on the cross, that we have hope of heaven. We also pray that as we're out in the world, that we conduct ourselves, that people see you working in our lives. We also pray that we live our life on this earth, that a home in heaven be ours. And these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Paramounts for taking the Lord's Supper. We'll sing number 349. 10,000 angels, 349. <clears throat> sing verses 1 and 4 of this song. And let's all sing. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he Himself 
to die. Salvation's wondrous plan was done. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. alone for you and me. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, as we come around your table to partake of this bread, which we know, and to us as Christians, children of yours, we, it represents to us your son's body as it hung on the cross between heaven and earth. And we pray, Father, as we partake of this, that we do so in a manner as pleasing your sight. For we pray in his name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Once again, let's go to God in prayer. Father, again, we come around your table this time to partake of the fruit of the vine, which to us as Christians represents your son's shed blood on the cross for the remission of our sins. We know, Father, that that's the only blood that can do that. And we pray, Father, that as we partake of it, we do so again in a manner that is pleasing in your sight. In his name we pray, Jesus the Christ. Amen. concludes the Lord's Supper, and as a reminder, which none of you need, but we all need to remember where everything comes from that we have, we say we have, it's really God's, and we're just stewards of it while we're here. We are blessed beyond belief, blessed beyond belief, and we thank God each and every day, I know each and every one of you do, but one way that we can show our appreciation and also help others is by giving back. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's go to God again in prayer. Father, as we prepare to, to give back and have given back, we pray, Father, that that you look down upon us and are pleased with our, with our giving. For we know that in order for things to work, they take funds. And we pray, Father, you'll do great things with these funds. You could stretch it farther than any of us could ever think about. And we pray, Father, that, that those that are that are affected and that receive these funds will, will do well with them and will come to you through your son, Jesus. Again, in his name we pray. Amen. Our next song will be number 860. There is a habitation, 860. <clears throat> we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of this song. Let's all sing. There is a habitation built by...
at page 903. There is power in the blood. That will be your invitation to psalm this, this morning. At the close of our lesson, the psalm before we have our lesson this morning, 895, 895, I'll live in glory. And we'll sing all three verses of this song. If you like, you may stand as we sing. If we sing this song, Brother Russ will bring us our, our message this morning. <coughs> I'll just sing. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. that I have heard sing. They have just, for whatever reason, you are just coming out more and more this morning. And that's a joy to hear for someone with hearing aids. It's good. I love when we lift up our voices unto our Lord to sing with the joy that is in our hearts. And that's what we should be doing every moment, every time we come together. Thankful for Brother Anthony and his ability to be able to lead us. Thankful for so many that are visiting with us from so many places around. And to hope and pray that this will not be the only time that you'll be able to be with us. But be with us at every opportunity that you can. We're so thankful for those who are still part of our family that are outside right now listening in. Thankful for the radio program that makes it uh, where we can do that and they can tune in and, and be a part of us. We have a lot in our hearts and our lives to be thankful for. We're all in our journey to try to live and be and accomplish 
the great pleasure of our God and the good things that He would have us to do in every respect of our life and living. We're getting very close. As Brother Anthony had pointed out to what Thanksgiving is and Christmas, the holiday seasons, a time when family and friends can take that time together to enjoy one another. So, for the next couple of sermons that we might have, can I at least take our hearts and our minds back to think a little bit on what Thanksgiving is. Not so much the day of itself, but what the word itself means and how that word was acted out in the lives of New Testament Christians. It is a word when you look it up in Vine's Expository New Testament Dictionary, Thanksgiving, to a word that he will say, turn to gratitude, an expression of gratitude of the things that we have both seen, heard, and are a part of our lives. And when you get back to gratitude, you're going to find out that it is a word that takes you back to the word grace, where we understand God's unmerited favor for us sinners has been so abundant that He was willing to give his son, his only son, to die on the cruel cross of Calvary for you and I. That you and I can have the hope of what he has given us. There is no greater life than I love to look at when it comes to learning what being thankful is all about and touching upon the little subjects that are part of thanksgiving and being thankful and expressing thanksgiving for what our Lord and our God has given us. Matter of fact, if you turn in your Bibles to the book that Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica, you will find his writing and the encouragement that he says there in uh, chapter, his second letter, chapter 1, where he said, But we bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting. He says, We thank God. The greatest thought in our hearts and our minds is to give thanksgiving to the God and Father who blesses us beyond measure, who truly gives us more than we deserve and enriches our hearts and our lives in the greatness of that, what that blessing is. The Bible teaches us that we need to learn in all of our hearts and our minds and everything to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He's speaking to me and you that we learn to give thanksgiving. I want to take you this morning from where our Bible text was taken from the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In Luke chapter 17, as you turn there in your Bibles and study with me a moment this morning, you're going to find my Lord teaching upon various subjects about the occasions of offense, how important it is to be forgiving to one another, how that the power of faith, starting out as small as even a grain of mustard seed, can grow into something magnificent and marvelous, not only in the meaning of our own lives, but what God would have it to me, and what glory we can bring to Him in all that is said and done. I love to look at the Gospels and see my Lord traveling as He journeys uh, from one point to another, and how that He is taking the Gospel of the Kingdom of Heaven to those who are in great need of it. In chapter 17, beginning at verse 11, and going forward as we begin reading together, we're going to notice something as he is on his way to Jerusalem. And he is passing, the Bible says, through Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was cleansed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. 
and he was a Samaritan. Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, and go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. This morning I want to share some little things right here that maybe as we look a little bit deeper within the text itself, you and I can agree upon them. But one of the things I want you to know that in the world in which you and I are living in today, even in the announcement that was made of our ability to be able to help those that are in need, some of the orphans that are in great need sometimes during this time of year, you and I can take what's in our pocket or in our purse and be able to help those people and make it a more joyful time in their life. But one of the things that I look at right here, in the travels of my Lord, my Lord was meeting people at a distance a lot of times. He was able to look out from town to town and city to city, and over the vast distance and all of his travels, he met many a folk. In this occasion... In a certain village, the Bible says, there met him ten men that were lepers. The Bible says that they stood afar off. In other words, as, Luke, as Leviticus chapters 13 and 14 give a detail on what it was and what remedies might be made, and what conditions a leper had to abide under the law of Moses. Those two chapters deal a lot. But we understand from the writing of the Word of God of old why they were at a distance. They were to keep themselves at a distance from anyone that they might come into contact with. They were to yell unclean. That it was against the law of God, the law of Moses, to come near to them. And so they were in the sense abiding by the word of God. But I want you to notice something. There are those like these ten men. Sometimes in the distance of our life whose lives are filled with desperation. When you study what it is to find and be a leper, that it was not just an easy process to take yourself before the priest and to bring about the reconciliation of hoping that leprosy was not going to be a part of your life. Or if it were, and then all of a sudden there was this cleaning process and the process that had to be gone through by the priest. These men were faced with a moment in their life of desperation that they saw hope. And that hope was found in Jesus Christ. They had evidently, from a distance, had heard of the power and majesty and sovereignty and the ability of what the Son of God was able to do. I know this was a moment for these men who had been separated from almost the rest of the world. I know this was a moment in their life where they had been singled out and as far as society was concerned, they were not allowed to be brought into society because of their physical condition. And a lot of times physical conditions have an overwhelming and a bearing even under the mental strain that we go through as human beings. Those of us who have been confined to a bed or confined to a hospital room or confined to being mobile, being able to get out for a while, we understand the stress and the strain that, that comes from that. But these men of desperation, even at a distance, lifted their voice. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. 
Oh, I know it was a moment in their life when Jesus, walking and journeying toward Jerusalem itself, Zion, was able to come into contact with these hearts and souls of these men who were desperate for help. I also look when I began to see how that when they had lifted up their voices and they had yelled to my Lord, have mercy upon us, that when my Lord saw them, in verse 14, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. I want you to see right here in God's word of these ten men who are filled in the moment of the desperate desperation of their souls, how that they had found a master who had told them, you go back and do the law of God. Keep the law of Moses. Go to the priest in Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. Anyone who was suspected to have leprosy had to go unto the priest. And the priest would make that decision whether or not they would be clean or unclean. Whether or not the unclean could be clean with the sacrifices of God by the burnt offering, the atonement offering, the two birds and the cedar and the scarlet and such that would be offered for them them in case cleanses. Jesus said, go keep the law of God. Go to the priest. And one of the most marvelous things when I see a demonstration right here of faith, they demonstrated because the Bible says they had turned to go. And as they had turned to go, that was, in essence, a demonstration to be obedient to what the Word of God would have them to do. And as they had turned to go, the Bible teaches us right here in the words, when He said, go show yourself to the priest, that it came to pass. Now, I don't know how far they got. I'd like to know that. Maybe one day when I get to heaven, I can ask my Lord. But they had turned to go and they were on their way to the priest like my Lord and Master Jesus had commanded them. And while they were on their way, something marvelous happened. The man, at least this man we're thinking about right here, we're talking about, we're looking at this morning. The Bible says right here that there was a redirection of his life. <laughs> Won't Jesus do that to you? A redirection of his life. And how that in his life a great declaration is going to be. Read with me where it says right here. And he turned back, verse 15, and with a loud voice glorified God. When he had listened to the Son of God, who would say to them, keep the word of my Father, Almighty God. He had been cleansed. Matter of fact, all ten had been cleansed. And this man had noticed his cleansing by the keeping of the faith of what the word of God had said. And he turned. He was redirected. He was redirected to understand that the hope and salvation of the cleansing of the soul can only come from Jesus Christ, our Master. And when the Bible says right here, He made a declaration unto him, He said He glorified God with a loud voice. I can only assume this. That when they were in their moment of desperation and they were at a distance from my Lord, when they yelled at a distance the precious name of the Son of God to have mercy upon them, and He told them at a distance to turn and keep the will and word of God by showing themselves unto the priest, they had made a few steps away. And when this man realized he had been cleansed, he turned. And at that distance,
distance, his voice had to get louder and it had to echo like from the mountaintops to glorify Jesus, to glorify God, the words God says. You see, his heart and his mind was redirected. Paul said, we thank God for you. We thank God. Thanksgiving must begin at our hearts and our minds with a thankfulness to who deserves it of all. And that's our Heavenly Father. This man who is redirected in his life was no longer standing. He understood that the way up is the way down. The Bible says right here that he had fallen to his face. He fell at the face, at the feet of my Lord, giving him thanksgiving. He was a Samaritan. Am I to assume, evidently, that all were not Samaritans? I don't know. But I know this, that a Samaritan in the days of my Lord and my Savior was considered an outcast. This was a singled out individual who in the minds of a Pharisee or a Jew was separated off in another way. They were considered dogs by the Jewish society. But I remembered right here from this very teaching that my Lord came to this old world of sin and sorrow to tell all humanity and the sons of men, I love you all. I died for you all. I love in this story and the joy that's found right here that my Lord, even from a distance, recognizes the desperation that we're all in, the great needs that we all have. Number one, I know that the teachings of my God are true, they are pure, and they're established from all time. When your faith believes that with all of your heart, you'll come to understand what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. When he is acknowledging to those brethren right here the great love that God has for us. Who bless the God, even the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all of our tribulations, our trials, our struggles, our sufferings, our adversities. We have a God who loves us, and He would comfort us. That we may be able to be comforted which in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted to God. And as the sufferings of Christ may abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. What did Paul express? That God would take all the troubles of our life and tell us He cares about us. He seeks to console us. He seeks to help us. That's why we can say with the greatest of confidence, my God is an ever-present help in my time of need. He is there for us. He demonstrates that in the joy of what He has given to us through His joy. And we can read of His wonderful power and majesty and glory like these ten who had been separated and singled out because of that in their life. I do know that right here in this redirection and this declaration of this man's faith, that Jesus in verse 17 will say, Where? Were there not ten of you? Were there not ten of you? But where are the nine? Beloved, I don't know how you feel about studying the Word of God right there and reading that question, but I'll tell you what I read. I read that my Lord was disappointed. He was disappointed. He was disappointed in the fact of knowing that there are so many who are so Ill, overwhelmingly blessed by Him, by God Himself. From Matthew's account, we understand that God loves us so much that He gives, he gives rain to the just and the unjust. In Luke chapter 6, he tells us God is, is loving and good to those who are evil and not evil. God loves the world. That's why he sent his only begotten son. 
It was so disappointing to my Lord who asked the question, were there not ten of you? Where, where are the nine? Where are the nine? Were there not nine of you in that same desperate condition? Were there not nine more of you that I told with the direction of Almighty God, keep God's law, keep God's word under the Old Testament, go show yourself to the priest, do what God had commanded us to do? And in that act of faith and turning and going, that faith found itself in the favor of God when that Samaritan found himself cleansed as the other nine. But it was only this man who had turned and come to the face of Jesus and falling before him glorified God for what he had received. Thanksgiving. The depth of the word. The meaning of it. You know, we live in a world today where being thankful is not always what it needs to be. We don't hear thank you. I had a gentleman one time when I was passing through Hardy's and I was telling him about Kim and Tammy that were working there and they had taken my order and said thank you and I said, well, thank you. He said, why do you say thank you back? <laughs> it's just the proper thing to do. But his attitude in his mind was said, they're just doing what they deserve to do. You remember in 17 here, verse 9, Luke 17. Read with me. Does the servant, to that servant, because he did the things that were he was commanded him? I don't know. Likewise, ye, when you have done all those things which have, you have been commanded and say we are unprofitable servants, we have, we've done that which was our duty to do. You remember this story, don't you? This is right before our lesson this morning. Where he says about how important it is to have faith and to live for our Lord. But which of you, having a servant plowing a field of cattle, and saying unto him, By and by, he has come from the field, go and sit down and be at dinner or meat? And will he not rather say to him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me till, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink? Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I don't think so. Why? Well, the servant had only done what the servant was supposed to do, right? What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story in the essence of doing what is commanded, that's something we all can do with joy. And we do it because we're servants. We're children of God serving Him. The important part of our living in our life is not to be disappointing in our need and in our moment of our weaknesses and all that if we just take the moment and say God you have you've answered my prayer you've given me what I've needed take the time to say thank you to say thank you to the master on high for giving me what I need when the Lord said right here, I have not found that return to give God the glory and save this stranger. He was filled with disappointment. And then he said unto that Samaritan, he said to that man who had struggled, been singled out, been separated from humanity, he said to him in this way, for the cleansing that he had received. Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. You hear that? Thy faith hath made thee whole. It takes faith to believe that God is, that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. To know that that faith produces the kind of understanding that God's love and commitment and goodness and kindness to you will extend beyond measure beyond our understanding a lot of times. 
that God truly will help us in all of what is said and done. I think if I could ask this question to you this morning, as I have done in my own life, have you felt down and out? Have you felt long? Have you felt at moments in your life like you didn't know what to do? A moment of desperation. To whom have you turned? I know you're like me at times. I have looked out for answers all over the world and I've sought them from a distance. And I never, until I have come to know my God, ever knew that the only true answer and help for my soul was my Savior. And when I turn to Him to glorify Him and give Him honor and praise for all of who He is, when He doesn't have to give me what He has bestowed upon me, but He has. Why? Because He loves me. And He does care. And He wants my soul to be gone. Then there's no reason in my heart why I won't praise Him and honor Him and give unto Him that is due him for what he has done for me. I remember Paul in his writing right here that we are bound to give thanks always for you brethren as it is fitting because that your faith groweth exceedingly and that love of every one of you all toward each other abounds so that we ourselves glory in you to the churches of God for your patience, your faith, your persecutions, your tribulations that you are enduring in. You see, the church has gone through things that you and I are going through. Who did they trust in? God. Who did they count on? God. Who held them together and bound them together in the love of God. Do you know God? Is He your Savior? Is He your God? He wants to be. He wants to be. The greatest desperation in a man or woman's life today is sin. If we're walking in sin and walking in unrighteousness, there needs to be the reversal of that. There must be a redirection of your life. There must be repentance. And if you're willing to say, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I want to own you as my Christ, my master, my king. If you'll come to him and confess that sweet name, as we study this morning in depth in Bible study, that you must be immersed in a watery grave of baptism to be brought forth to newness of life. If you're willing to do that, he's willing to help you. It's like an act of faith. You've heard what the Samaritan needed to do. He was told what to do. And if you will but turn, you will realize by that your obedience to God, God will truly bless you abundantly and wonderfully in your life. We need to be encouraged. We need to know that as we live for our Lord, we need to live a life of determination. We need to be determined. That we'll do more for our Christ. Be thankful. Be thankful not only to our God. We'll say thank you and to, to everybody that's around us. That will be an expression of all of who we are in Christ Jesus. Just to learn to say tomorrow, thank you for your help. Thank you for your words. Thank you. It should be a word that should be a part of our lives. I know the angels of heaven will say thank you for your commitment to Christ this morning. Whether you need to do that for the first time or you need to be restored, come while together we stand and while we sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's Wonder
taking power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful Next week, Adelie will have her tonsils and adenoids taken out on Thursday. Uh, so remember her, if you will. Alyssa will have her wisdom teeth taken out on Friday. So uh, both of these uh, will need our prayers this coming week. So remember them. Remember all the others that we talked about, those uh, families that have recently lost loved ones. We want to remember them as well. Uh, are there anything else we need to talk about before we're dismissed? Men, remember, I need to meet you just briefly down front here before, after we close. Uh, I'll be very brief. Closing song 414. 414. Anywhere with Jesus. We'll sing one verse there, and after that we'll be dismissed in prayer. Thank you so much for being here. Again, thank you visitors for visiting with us, and be back, please, at any time that you have opportunity. <clears throat> Let's all sing. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity we have had to come together this morning to spend time in worship to Thee. Lord, as we separate, we'd ask that You would carry each and every one of us safely to our homes. We're just thankful for each and every member of this congregation, each and every family that's represented here this morning. We ask Your blessings to flow upon them. And Lord, may we always remember as the example we were given this morning from Your Word to give thanks for all the things that we have received. We know that everything that we have comes from Thee, and we're so thankful for that. We thank You for the answered prayers that You have given us here in the past, and we ask that You continue to be with those that are in need of our prayers at this time. Those who were mentioned this morning that are in need of prayers, continue to be with them. Bring us back here at the next appointed time. It's in Christ's precious name that we pray. Amen.